All right, math class, Algebra 2, how we doing? Um, sorry for posting this late. had some issues with um, my internet today. Moved my router and lost internet and, I don't know, but we figured it out. So all is good. I'm going to post this a little bit late. I'll give you guys a couple days to, to work on this. Um, going to do the odds for notes and ask that you do the evens for homework. So um, instead of giving you guys a separate... Um, assignment for homework, what you're going to do is copy the notes, do the evens as homework, and um, post those both under one assignment, okay? Um, <clears throat> so today what we're doing is adding and subtracting radicals as well as multiplying radicals. All right, so let's go ahead and get started All right, on adding and subtracting rad radicals. Uh, so there's three steps here. Number one, simplify all radicals, right? So there's step one right there. All right, simplify all radicals. Step two, all right, identify radicals with the same index and the same radicand. Uh, only these can be combined, all right? Um, so again, just like, let's look at, you know, up here at the top, 2x plus 3y, all right? Are we able to combine those? No, they're not like terms, right? So, um, you know, this would be as simplified as it gets right here, okay? However, if we had 2x plus 3x, would that be able, would we be able to simplify that? Yes, right? This is 5x, and we are able to do that because, why? Because they are like terms, because they have the same variable with the same exponent, which we don't see because it's 1, all right? Um, so, again, just remember like terms. Well, this is very similar to that, all right? Look at step 2 one more time right here. Identify radicals with the same index and same radicand. Only these can be combined. So, um, again, we are trying to combine like terms here. All right? And then three, for common radicals, add slash subtract, depending upon what sign is, what the sign is, add or subtract the coefficients and keep the common radicals. So notice here, right, we keep up at the top, if you see, right, we keep that x there, right? We add the uh, coefficients, Right, and then keep the x just as one, you know, one, one x there, right? We combine those, right? And that stays the same. This is exactly what we're doing here, except what we're looking at is the radical. All right, so let's go ahead and start. Can we simplify? All right, it's always, always going to be the first step, right? And we're on number one here, right? And I'm going to, again, as I said, we're going to do the odds. And I apologize, again, I cannot zoom in, all right? Um, but what I can do is do some work here in this column. So I'm going to go ahead and simplify. 3 square root of 27, so there's a square root, so 3 square root of 27, all right? Now, are there any perfect squares um, that are factors of tw uh, the square root of 27? Let's look, all right? Divide 27 in half, right? It's around 13, right? Let's go to the first perfect square that we hit that's less than 13, right? 9, right? 9 is the first perfect square, so there we go, 9 square root of 9 times the square root of 3, all right? So what is the square root of 9? And this is, this 3, by the way, stays on the outside here, right? Right like this, all right? So we have 3 times the square root of 9 times 3. The square root of 9 is 3, so now we have 3 times 3 times the square root of 3. And what is 3 times 3? That is 9, so we get 9 square root of 3 here, all right? So you guys saw what I did there to simplify this um, radical right here, all right? So now we have 9 square root of 3. Let me go ahead and write that underneath. 9, I'm sorry, 9 square root of 3. And then that's going to be minus. Now we have to simplify 2 square root of 12. Luckily, there's a video, so if you need this, you can go back and look at it. I'm starting to realize these things, you know? This isn't like a chalkboard. If you need to look back at that, go ahead and rewind it, and you know you can hit the pause button. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing, right? All right. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and simplify 2 square root of 12. All right. So let's divide 12 by 2, all right? 12 divided by 2 is 6. 6 is not a perfect square. 5 is not a perfect square. 4 is a perfect square. Is 4 a factor of 12? Sure is. 4 times 3 gives us 12. So we're going to go ahead and make this square root of 4 times square root of 3 and keep this 2 right here on the outside, as you see. So we have 2 times the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. Square root of 4 is 2. So now we're left with 2 times 2 times square root of 3. 
all right? And that becomes 4 square root of 3, okay? Now, this is stuff we've done in the past as far as simplifying radicals, so I'm not going to be as in-depth with all of these, okay? If you are having trouble with that, you need to come into a Zoom meeting, meet with me, all right? We will have a Zoom meeting uh, tomorrow. That is Thursday, all right? Thursday at uh, 11 a.m., all right? 11 a.m., we will have a Zoom meeting. And again, if you if you want to go over uh, things like simplifying radicals, that is the time to do it. This is stuff we've learned in the past. You have notes on this. All right. So, 9 square root of 3 minus 4 square root of 3. All right. 9 minus 4, what does that give us? All right. And look, again, these are the coefficients. All right. 9 is a coefficient. 4 is a coefficient. All right. So, we are subtracting the coefficients. This would be like saying 9x minus 4x. Okay. 9x minus 4x would give us 5x, right? All right, so very similar to that, 9 square root of 3 minus 4 square root of 3 will end up giving us 5 square root of 3. And that is our final answer here. So simplify, all right? If they are like terms, all right, then you can go ahead and subtract or add, all right? Very good. So let's go with the next one. Now we're looking at fourths, right? We're looking at fourths. So you need to know your perfect fourths here, all right? Um, we don't need to know them. You can go back and look at your notes, all right? Again, beauty of, of being able to go back and look at your notes, something very important. And if you guys do not do that, yeah, it's going to be very difficult. In fact, probably impossible. I would not be able to do it without looking back and looking at the perfect fourths. Would not be able to, to be quite honest with you. So if you're not doing that and you're like, man, I, you know, I don't know why I can't get this, well, it's because you're probably not doing it the way that you should be, right? You're not you're not doing your due diligence and um, working the problem all the way through. Yet you you will need your notes in math from here on out, all right? So if you have not learned how to use your notes, um, again, this is this is kind of a good opportunity to figure that out, especially being you know in quarantine or you know with the social distancing. All right, guys. So here we go. Let's get this going. Seven to the fourth root of forty-eight. All right, seven times the fourth root of forty-eight. So. 48 divided by 2 is 24. 24 is not a perfect fourth. The closest perfect fourth to that would be the square root uh, or the fourth root of 16, which happens to work out. 16 times 3 is 48. So what we're going to do here, all right, I'm going to erase this again. This is going to be my workspace over here since I can't zoom in. All right. So 7, fourth root of 48. All right. So here we go. This is a perfect fourth, and the seven's going to stay on the outside, right, as you can see, all right, times the fourth root of three. Think about this, right? Fourth root of 16 times the fourth root of three gives us the fourth root of 48. So all we're doing is we're breaking it down, trying to figure out a, if there is a factor that is a perfect fourth, 16 is, okay? What is... The fourth root of 16, it's 2, all right? It's 2. So we're left with 7 times 2 times the fourth root of 3. How is this 2, right? Well, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 equals 16. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 2 is 16, all right? That's how we figured that out. If you're having issues with that, may God have mercy on your soul. No, I'm just kidding. Just come see me at the Zoom meeting. All right, 7 times 2. Here we go. 14 to the 4th root of 3 here. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and write that here. 14, 4th root of 3. Can't believe that just worked out. I mean, it doesn't look good, but it's better than nothing. All right. <clears throat> we cannot simplify this, fellas. All right. Minus 2 times the 4th root of 3. We can't simplify it. So that's going to stay the same. 2 times the 4th root of 3, and then we're left with plus 3, <clears throat> excuse me, 3, just make sure I got this, yep, 3, third root of 72, all right, now that one's not simplified all the way, so I'm actually going to go ahead and erase that, it's my fault, all right, we need to simplify that, so I'm going to go over here and do my work and see if we can simplify that, we could not simplify the second term, but we can simplify the, the first and the third term, so, Three. Now this is a cube root, all right? This is a cube root. Notice the three here, right? It's a cube root. So three times the cube root of seventy-two. All right. 
we divide 72 by 2. We work our way down and try to look at the perfect cubes and see what we got. Again, I'm not going through all this. You can look at our old notes on this, all right? Um, we got to speed up the process here. But we do have a perfect cube that is a factor of 72, which is the cube root of 8, all right? So we have 3 times the cube root of 8 times the cube root of 9. Cube root of 9 is not a perfect cube, by the way, right? 3 times 3 times 3 is not 9, right? But 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. So the cube root of 8 is 2. So this is 3 times 2 times the cube root of 9. So we're left with 6 cube root of 9 right here. So I'm going to write that 6 cube root of 9. Now, do we have any light like terms? Yes, we do. I right? see that these guys are both fourth, um, fourth roots of 3, okay, so 14 minus 2 gives us 12, yeah, let me do this in another color, 12, fourth root of 3, and then, is this a like term here, this guy, no, for a couple reasons, number one, it's not the same root, right, you see that we have a 3 there, right, so that's one reason they're not like terms, so no matter what, this is off the board, right, but also, we have a 9 inside of here, which does not match the 3 that we have inside, so there's no like terms regardless, all right? So we're just going to keep that on the back end as 6 cube root of 9, and that is our final answer. Again, I apologize for my handwriting. I cannot zoom in. I cannot make it any better, and I have my iPad's too old enough to use an Apple Pencil. So uh, I've got everything kind of going against me with the, uh, with the whole handwriting thing. All right, let's continue. This is fun. This is fun. All right, the square root of 98, x to the fourth, y to the second, minus 3x squared, y, times the square root of 2. All right, so let's go ahead and simplify this. All right, 98 is not a perfect square, all right, not a perfect square. x to the fourth is a perfect square. y to the second is a perfect square. Remember what a perfect square is, right? Anything that's divisible by 2 here, right? Any exponent that's divisible by 2 is a perfect square. 4 is divisible by 2. y, um, y to the second, 2 is divisible by 2, of course. All right, so we just need to figure out. we got to simplify this. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and erase this junk over here. It's not junk. This is, this is beautiful stuff. This is great work. Great, great work. Great work. All right, so here we go. The square root of 98x to the fourth. And how do you do this? You just divide the exponent by 2 since this is a square root. We're just dividing the exponent by 2 to simplify it. All right, but we need to figure out 98 first, okay? So is there any perfect square inside of 98? Good. 49 is the right answer. Great job. So what I'm going to do here is this, okay? I'm going to go ahead and take this and make this the square root of 49 times the square root of 2, all right? What's the square root of 49? It is 7, all right, times the square root of 2, all right? So, so we are left with 7 square root of 2. However, right, these are both perfect cubes, so these need to come to the outside as well. x to the fourth, we divide that by 2, and we get 7x squared. y to the second, we divide that by 2, right, the exponent by 2, so we're left with 7x squared y, right, and the only thing that's left inside is going to go ahead and be this square root of 2. So we're left with 7x squared y, 7x squared y times the square root of 2, all right, I'll write that here. Sorry, it's not at all what I was supposed to do. x squared y times the square root of 2. Minus 3x squared y square root of 2. Now, let me ask you this question. Do we have like terms? We sure do. Right, we sure do. We do have like terms. You can see uh, for a couple reasons here. All right, uh, We are not doing any subtraction as far as... Oh, let, me, let me give you another color here. We're not doing any subtraction as far as this. Right, These are going to stay the same. If this was just 7x squared y minus 3x squared y. We're going to get 4x squared y. The difference here is we also have this at the back end of it, right? All that means is that that's going to be on the back end here and on the back end here as well. So 
let's go ahead and finish this up. I don't know if this sounds weird. I just accidentally hit a button. But anyway, I'm going to continue to go. I think we're okay. All right, so I'm going to erase these guys. X squared, Y, X squared, Y. All right, so 7 minus 3 gives us 4. And we keep everything else on the back end. I know that looks crazy, but that is our answer. And that's our answer up here, by the way. I didn't box our answer. It's always important to box them. All right. Fantastic. We're going to go ahead and go with multiplying radicals here. All right. 27 times 5. So there's a square root of 27. Oops. That was supposed to be an eraser. Square root of 27 times the square root of 5. All right. Uh, when you are multiplying here, let's look at the steps. Multiply coefficients, then use the product rule. Oh, the product rule. Okay. What is the product rule here? What is the product rule? Well, as long as they're the same, right, in which in this case, right, we have n, which stands for any number that is the same here, right, we can just multiply whatever's inside, and they will remain inside of the square root. So, in this case, right, and I'm not going to write this out like this every single time, but we would have square root 27 times 5. We can just combine those because they're both inside. They're both radicands, right? They're both inside of the square root. So 27 times 5, what does that give us? 27 times 5 is 135, right? So this right here equals the square root of 135. Now, are we done? We'll look at step 2. We have to simplify this if possible. All right, is there any perfect squares inside uh, that are factors of 135? There sure is. 9 is a perfect square as a factor of 135. So what we're going to do is make this square root of 9 times, what is it multiplied to? Square root of 15. That would give us uh, 135. All right, I'm going to write the final answer here to the left a little bit. All right, um, so square root of 9 is 3, and we're left inside with the square root of 15 as our final answer. Okay, there it is. Next problem. Multiply the coefficients, all right? Now they both, first of all, you guys need to realize this, right? As I said up here, they both have to be the same kind of root, right? And these are both cube roots, so this is, this is perfectly fine. If one of these was a cube root of three and the other one was a square root, like that wasn't there, right? And it was a square root. No, these wouldn't be able to be multiplied. There would be a, there would be an issue there. Okay, so um, they have to be the same root. All right. So two times five gives us ten. All right. So this is going to be ten, and then cube root nine times negative twenty four gives us negative two sixteen. Ooh. Well, there's good news here. Negative 216 is a perfect cube. Yes, you can have negative numbers that are perfect cubes. Negative numbers can be perfect fifths. Any odd root can have negative perfect cube or perfect numbers, okay? They can be negative inside. The radicand can be negative if the root is odd. All right, so what is the cube root of 216? Great job, Ricky Gantz. Man, he is killing it today again, just on fire, all right? Negative 216. Um, the cube root of negative 216 is negative 6, so we are left with 10 times negative 6, all right? And this is your basic math here, fellas, all right? 10 times negative 6, good job, Ferris, negative 60. Congratulations to our seniors for getting the heck out during this crazy time. Proud of you guys. We have a few of them. You guys are, you guys are awesome. We're going to miss you. Wish the year didn't end this way. Um, I'm not done with the lesson, but I just thought about you guys. So anyway, negative 60. There we go. All right, let's continue here. All right, and I'm only going to get to number 13 here. I'm not doing the binomial examples. All right, um, we're at 19 minutes in the video right now. I uh, don't want to overdo it. Just want to get you guys going with this. So here we go. Square root of 6x to the fourth times 5 square root of 8x to the fifth. Okay. Well, we got to multiply the coefficients. The coefficient here, is there a coefficient? There sure is. It's a 1, right? Even though we don't see it, there's a 1 in front of it. So 1 times 5 is 5. So we have a 5 that's out there. 6 times 8 gives us 48. We can do that because they're both inside of the square root. And x to the 4th 
times x to the fifth. What is the product rule? When you multiply exponents, when you are multiplying, um, sorry, when you are multiplying variables with exponents that are the same, you have to add the exponents. Okay, so x to the fourth plus five gives us x to the ninth. That's a terrible nine. Terrible nine. <sighs> Dalton. I'm blaming that on Dalton. It's Dalton's fault. Alright. That's still not a great nine. I can't I can't really help it. Alright, so here we go. Is x to the ninth a perfect square? It sure isn't. Alright, so that means one of our x's is gonna be inside of the square root. Alright. So what we end up getting here, alright, I'm gonna go ahead and break this down. We end up at with a five. Uh, actually I'm gonna go ahead and do this over here. 5 square root of 48x to the 9th. That's a 9. That's a 9 in all, all languages. All right. So here we go. Probably not. 5. Now, is there a perfect square? Is 48 a perfect square? No, it is not. Is there a perfect square inside of 48? That is a factor of 48. Yes, 16. 16 times 3. So 16 is the perfect square. So I'm going to go ahead and put that here. 16. All right, is x to the ninth a perfect square? No, is there a perfect square in x to the ninth? Yes, right? Remember, it just has to be even. So we have to subtract 1 and make that x to the eighth. So those are our perfect squares, and we're going to multiply that by whatever's left over. 16 times the square root of 16 times the square root of 3 would give us the square root of 48. And x to the eighth times x would give us x to the ninth. So there's our non perfect square root sign. So this is going to be 5 times, what is the square root of 16? 4. What is the square root of x to the 8th? x to the 4th. Times square root of 3x. 5 times 4 is 20. x to the 4th. Square root of 3x. And we are done there. So 20. That's not it x to the fourth, square root of three, x, game, set, match. All right, last one, fellas, and then uh, we'll call it a day. Call it an evening, I guess, at this point. All right, cube root of negative three, a to the seventh, b to the fourth, times cube root of 36, a to the sixth, b to the second. Sounded like an auctioneer there. All right, we have nothing, no coefficients, right? What's the coefficient? Coefficient is the number that is outside, all right, or in front, all right? We have no coefficients, so we don't have to worry about that, right? So we're left with cube root of 108, because negative 3, uh, excuse me, negative 108, because negative 3 times 36 is negative 108. So I'm going to erase all this, by the way. Yep, you got to sit there through the video and watch me erase that. Hope you enjoyed it. All right, so negative 3 times... Um, 36 gives us the cube root of, and all of this is going to be inside since we have no coefficients here. All right, negative 108. A to the 13th, B to the 6th, because we're just adding the exponent. All right, so we have the cube root of negative 108, A to the 13th, B to the 6th. I'm going to go ahead and do this up here. <laughs> oh boy. All right, that's a six. Yeah. All right, so here we go. What is a perfect cube that is a factor of 108? All right, so if you just go into your cube root chart, all right, you should be able to figure this out very easily. All right, negative 27. We want to take the negative out. We want to take the negative out. So, cube root. I'm going to put my perfect cubes into this one here. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and do this. All right, that's cube root. All right, geez. All right, so 27 is a perfect cube. We want the negative to come outside, so we're going to make this negative 27. Now, the reason I'm using negative 27 is because negative 27 times 4 gives us negative 108. So over here, I'm going to put our non-perfect cubes, and 4 is not a perfect cube. All right. Now, a to the 13th, is that a perfect cube? No. All right. has to be this exponent here, and I want you to look at this, right? This exponent here would have to be divisible 
by 3 in order for it to be perfect, right? So it's not divisible by 3. But what could we do to make it divisible by 3? We could get rid of one of these a's, right, and put it here, right? And now it's a to the 12th, which is divisible by 3, which makes this possible for us to do. And b to the 6th already is a perfect cube, so we can keep that there. And that is a 6, despite what others might tell you. I, I'm going to try my best. There we go. All right, so let's go ahead and finish this up. The cube root of negative 27 is negative 3. Negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 is negative 27. So I'm going to go ahead and put that outside. Negative 3. What is the cube root of a to the 12th? Well, 12 divided by 3 is 4, so it's a to the 4th. b to the 6th, the cube root of b to the 6th, 6 divided by, and I'm just dividing by this number here, the, 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 whatever the root is, right? That's how it works for exponents. 6 divided by 3 is 2, so we're left with b squared. And none of this right here is perfect, right? So that's stuck where it is, so we just leave that on the back end as the cube root of 4a. Oh, boy. So let me write the final answer out. The final answer is, and I'm going to try to space it out so it's nice and easy to see, negative 3a to the 4th b to the 2nd times the cube root of 4a. And that is our final answer. Go ahead and box that one and box this one. Sorry for posting this late. I'll give you guys uh, all the classes next day to work on it. Um, what I want you to do is the evens, all right? So that is 14, 12, I'm reading backwards, 10, 8, 6, 4, and 2. Um, they're very similar to the problems I just did, all right? Um, look, one of the big things about this time period, all right, you guys still have a month left of, of school, right? A month left of work, okay? Um, it's on you, right? It's, it's, a lot of it's on you, right? If you're not logging into Zoom meetings, if you don't understand what's going on, if you're not keeping up with your work, right? If you're not doing those things, you know, it's going to be a brutal month, right? But if you're checking it, I've had guys check into Zoom meetings that need zero help that are just checking in and saying, hey, just wanted to say hi. That, that's awesome. You know, I think it's a good morale booster for everybody. Um, so, you know, just check into the Zoom meetings. If you're having issues, it's just like um, asking me a question during class. It's like coming to me after school, uh, except... You know, it's at your own leisure, all right? You know, just come into the Zoom meeting, ask me what you need, um, and, and I'm, I'm here to help you guys, okay? So uh, get going with this, all right? If you're having issues with it, I'll see you at the Zoom meeting tomorrow at 11, all right? Um, so that means you got to get going with this uh, either this evening or tomorrow morning. All right, if you are not sure whether or not you're going to need help, just log into the Zoom meeting, all right? And say what's up, all right? Hope you guys are doing well. Miss y'all. Um, would love to see more people in the Zoom meetings, even if you're just checking in to say hey. All right, guys. Talk to you later.